Okay, as you know, or as you should know at least, I am someone who loves the High School Musical franchise, and I have ever since I was a young child. It's really shaped who I am today, you know? I wouldn't have liked Glee, which probably wouldn't have put me into theater, which is now my hopeful career path if it wasn't for High School Musical. So, High School Musical is truly, like, the dictator of my whole future which is fun. In the next part, the part two to this video will be me rewriting High School Musical 3. I'm going to be taking like what we already have and changing some things and giving it some rewrites so that it can be a stronger, more compelling, clearer, more understandable, better story. So look forward to that. This part is going to be me talking about my likes and my dislikes to, to, to like show you the beforehand and I want you to like understand that even though I'm rewriting it I'm not just trying to like change it to something that I would like personally I'm trying to make it like an all-around better movie so without further ado High School Musical 3 okay we can skip through this it's just basketball okay that scene I like that scene good simple pure basketball sets up the movie I have no issues with it Wild cats. Wild cats. I really like that scene too. Because it's a nice, wonderful pep talk. We see Troy's dad being a good dad, and then they mention the 16 minutes, which leads you into the song, and then Troy says now or never. It's like a perfect transition into the opening number. And then Chad does the iconic Wildcats chant. It's just good scene. Love that scene. This basketball game has so much pep. If my school had basketball games like this, maybe I would care about them. <laughs> Ugh. Such a- It's so well put together, cause it's like- It's like Get Your Hand in the Game, but so much better. Because like, what they're saying matches the like, the video so perfectly. It's just so well like, edited. It's so well put together. This number is amazing. This whole moment is slow motion with the whole Gabriella singing great moment. I'm gonna do like a whole at least 10 minute rant on Rocket Man, but let me just say right now when he's introduced, I hate him, his character's stupid and so unnecessary to the plot, his character needs to be written out of the canon completely. See, even Troy's dad's not having it. That transition is the best part in the whole song where they go from talking to like the, the song. That transition's so good. Like, no. Yeah, it was supposed to be like a whole moment because he's like, no one knows if he's good and he's kind of annoying, but also that was just stupid. <laughs> he shouldn't be bad, he's on the varsity team. But like, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> I'll also get into this, but the whole storyline with Troy's truck is also very stupid. I usually skip this whole scene with Troy and Gabriella because it's that boring to me, but it's not like a bad scene. See, he's creepy and unnecessary. I don't like him. Oh, his dad went there. That's why he cares so much about going to this school. You see, I skip this scene every time. I don't know this. Come on, she's proud of you. I'm proud of you. That's sweet. Can you imagine? We're gonna skip this song real quick because I've seen it many times, but like the scene's also really lovely. It's not like my favorite scene. It's not anything like exponentially amazing, but it's cute and it's important because the song is on the soundtrack. We love the cape foreshadowing to the boys are back. I also didn't catch that because I always skip the scene. And then we go up to my queen, Sharpay, being the bad bitch that she is, being a queen. I love her. Look at her, being amazing. I love her. Iconic car. Iconic look. Iconic parking spot. Like an, a true icon. Who just does a spin in the hallway? Sharpay Evans, bad too, because she's better than you. Look at that iconic look. I want that look so bad. That look is so good. An icon with a double locker. I just love Sharpay so much. I like Tiara. She's a wonderful character. I really do love her. You know, just like a thing I want to make, like there's a whole, there's a bunch of deleted scenes 
from this movie, a lot of scenes that they cut that make me very angry because there's this whole scene right after this scene where Tiara comes in with Sharpay and they meet Ryan and she introduces herself as Tiara. And Ryan's like, Tiara, that sounds like a stage name, you know, foreshadowing the fact that like she's an evil person and maybe that's not her real name. But they cut that, but kept this stupid scene with Jimmy. I, I'm gonna get into it, but like just, you know, food for thought. He's kind of uh, an unnecessary point of the story. This moment's iconic, because she's iconic. What a queen. Shut him down. Yes, Taylor. Yeah, we can- this, this scene is, doesn't really have anything important. It's a filler scene, but filler scenes are important. That outfit's so nice, though. They're both so well-dressed. And, like, I want to make it so clear that you may think that this is the first day of school. It is not. It is very much just in the middle of the school year. It's probably, like, towards the end. Because probably be in, like, May. And they're just this well-dressed, like, on a daily basis. Like, you could never, your faves could never, only Ryan and Sharpay Evans could ever. I really like this scene in this song for some reason. I just think, I think it's the colors. Like the, like the pure white and then like the really bold blue and the pink. It just looks really nice. For like, the longest time when I watched this movie, I, ha I had no idea how Ryan was climbing down there. It took me like a good like, five years of watching this before I was like, oh there are stairs. See, this, it's just, it's so good. Love that scene. What a good number. Taylor's outfit is so nice. Like, everything matches so well, and then she just has like a parasol. Like, amazing. Taylor's so iconic. This scene is so good. Can I have this dance? I will say, I will write it in stone and everything. Is the most beautiful love song in all of time and eternity. It's so good. It's so beautiful. They dance so well. And then the rain at the end, it's just, it's iconic. It is the best love song ever. Like of all time of every song in the entire world. No one can find a love song better than Can I Have This Dance? Cause it's so good. It's so well choreographed. The scene's so good. I taught myself to waltz because of this music video. I literally just sort of copied what they were doing. And is that proper waltzing? Who knows? But I can pass well enough. And I would like to thank Troy and Gabriella for that. It's so beautiful. And I don't know if it was purposeful, but to me it's purposeful. It's supposed to like mirror their time on like the golf course at High School Musical 2 when like the sprinklers went off. It's just so good. The rain's so beautiful. See, that scene was so cute. This scene's stupid. It's so stupid, I'm gonna skip it. The whole you have to earn your locker thing, I don't care that much. I hate this scene. It's stupid and it wastes so much time in this wonderful movie. We did not need this. We're skipping it right now. But Ryan's outfit in it, iconic. Those boots, I want them. I need them. They're so nice. And like the pants and just everything. I His outfits are so well put together. Like, like the stripe of like fabric on his hat that matches his pants. Like, I'm 100% sure he makes his own outfits and they're all iconic. You know what? That was really cute though. He like goes around to open the door for her. Just little things, real cute, real sweet. I was joking. The way he delivers that line is really good. It seems very genuine and I like that. But that scene in general, that scene was so cute. It was like, it's a very genuine scene where they seem to like actually be talking and it's like very important to the plot. It like forwards the plot. It's like a filler scene, but like it has purpose. I like that scene. That scene's cute. You'll be dancing with yourself. What a queen. We love a girl who knows what she wants. Yes, Taylor, iconic. Yo, 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 it's lunchtime. That's the only thing that I like from him in this entire movie. That stupid line. That would never get a lunch room that quiet. But this is so sweet. He did this for Taylor. What a promposal. Your man could never. I love when Taylor's deliberating whether or not to say yes to Chad. She just sort of looks at the rest of them. They don't say anything. They're just like looking. A Night to Remember is the best number in this whole movie. I will say that right now. It's so good. Even the way that they just did this part where it's just an up and down thing with the guys and girls. It's so simple, but it's so well done. Like, I love it so much. This scene is the best choreographed number next to uh, I Don't Dance, but that's a different movie. This is the best choreographed number in this entire movie. It's so good. Like, 
it's so sharp and it's partner work which is always really hard it's just it's so good this number is so good i love this number so much that number is so good bravo See, this whole scene is so stupid. I hate his character so much. It's so unnecessary to the plot. I love how she doesn't say an understudy to whom. It's just, you are an understudy. See, what That's what was that exchange? Your mom must be so proud. I know that this whole exchange is supposed to be so that, like, Tiara can go snitch to Sharpay, but, like, I love how supportive and encouraging Taylor is to Gabriella. Because Taylor's whole thing is that she's, like, the smart one, but she also doesn't have to be, like, that bitch where she's like, I can be the only smart one. Like, she's supportive and happy for her other friends. That's, like, that's wonderful. Wait, did that say she was valedictorian? Give me that deep lore. Always top of her class at mix of four different high schools. Likes animals. She's a she was the valedictorian. Wow, what a queen! That outfit's so nice. Every single one of Ryan's outfits is so good. I don't know what that wallet chain is. I don't even think it's connected to a wallet. I think it's just connected to two two different belt loops. But like the colors are so nice. I love his outfits. I really like this scene. This scene's cute, even though they're not. Neither of them are straight. And Luke is great real. Beautiful voice. He did not get enough singing time. But then the transition to Troy Gabriel. So good! So good! Ryan choreographing though is so... I love this. It's so cute. This seems so cute. Ryan with his little choreographing things. Like, it's not like a, a, like a huge number, but it's like, it's a cute number. It's a really good number. I love this song, by the way. That song's so beautiful. The fact that there's not like a full version with like the, the the verse and bridge from the spring musical in this whole song, there's not like a full conglomerated version, makes me upset. Okay, but he doesn't follow this scene. His scene's before this scene. I don't. That line never made any sense. The turnaround arm cross is so cool. It's so cheesy, but it's so good. That floor work is so good though. Like. I will always love the choreography in all of these songs. It's so good. Wait. That part sounds so good! Like, vocally, that part is like my favorite part of the song. It's just so. This dance break's also really good. This part fucked me up when I first saw it. Like, when they crawl under the car and, like, they become their younger versions. That part fucked me up. I was like, what the? It still fucks me up, but, like, whoa. I was shocked for like a good week after I saw this. I love this tire part too, because like Chad just sort of stands on it and like doesn't fall, and like I could never balance who I don't know her. That slide and jump is also very smooth. I don't know. It's not the one to hear. See, I love that response though. Chad doesn't ever discourage Troy because Chad is the bestest friend a best friend could ask for. He doesn't discourage him. He's just like, it's not what I wanted to hear. But he's not like, you can't say yes if they accept you because he wants Troy to follow his dreams and he wants Troy to do what's best for him because he's a good friend. We rarely see Sharpay in anything besides her classic like pink, white, and silver. So seeing her in blue is very nice. She looks very good in blue. See, that conversation was so cute. It was encouraging and like respectful and a very adult conversation, especially for teenagers in a Disney film. Like that was very much a, that was just a really nice conversation to show that they like can understand that their lives have bigger meaning outside of their relationship. Except Gabriella struggles with that a lot. The way that they felt that though, so that like, all the things around her are slowly being like taken down because she's moving is a really like well done creative way to show that she like packed up all her stuff and decided to leave without just like showing her doing it. I really, I just really like that. It's really it's good thinking. But the thing that I don't get, like I talked this through with my friend and she had a really good point that like Gabriella's mom said that she would stay until Gabriella graduated so that she didn't have to move, which like makes sense. And now that like, Gabriella's moving like her mom has no like obligation to stay in Albuquerque, but like if she's already here, why is she moving with Gabriella? Like Gabriella's going off to college. Why is her mom also moving? Like why can't your why can't her mom just stay in Albuquerque? What is forcing her mom to move with Gabriella? You would think that when your child goes off to college, you don't follow them. 
The only thing that I can think of is that like the honors program doesn't provide room and board, which makes no sense because if you're going seemingly on a scholarship, they should provide a place for you to stay. I don't know. It's just really weird because they packed up like their whole house and they sold it. I'm like, why is her mom going with her? It's just, it's weird. Another thing, I read like I think on like a High School Musical wiki that this is supposed to happen in like a day. That seems like so unrealistic. How can you pack up your whole house in basically a night and then leave the next morning? Like that's not how life works. How's that big show going? Oh, you don't want to I never liked that though, because if he didn't want to know, why would he ask? Troy, he's trying to be compassionate and understanding and trying to like talk through this whole Juilliard thing even though he doesn't understand it. Troy just sort of blows up at him and I'm like, I get it. Your dad's being a bit judgy, but also he's trying. Like your dad has, he just, he's had this one track mind your whole life. You've been playing basketball. He's been coaching you play basketball. You just won back to back championships. You know, he's thinking you're going to go to college play basketball and then you know new things arise and he's like well what is this and instead of like talking through it Troy's just like I gotta go to the school which is for some reason unlocked in the middle of the night and go perform a whole musical number which is weird see he just drives up to the school like it's all fine and open in the middle of the night this scene always fucked me up too because I was like how is he not getting hit with any of these I later learned that most of it was CGI. But like watching it when it first came out, I was like, what the, how? They're just all raining from the ceiling and no one's ever hitting him? But then, cause then he grabs one and you're just like, what? See, some of them are real, some of them are fake and that fucks me up. I love that transition with the throw to the spinny room. I did not know how they filmed this scene until like two weeks ago when my friend told me and I was like, oh wow. They just sort of, they rebuilt the hallway, they put it on a turkey thing, which, you know, makes a lot of sense, but also just like watching this, I'm like, well, how is this happening? I love the choreo in this scene as well, because it's simple, but it's like, like really well, like timed and choreographed where he's like just sort of walking and punching things, but it's like really smooth. And then the Juilliard poster. The cinematography of the scene is just really good. Okay, storytelling wise, this part of the scene where he rips down his poster from the from the lunchroom is really good. And like symbolically, it means a lot. It's really well done. But like, why? First of all, why do they have giant posters of only three of the team members? And when did those go up? Because those were not in the lunchroom like a month or so ago when Chad promposed to Taylor. So like, when did those go up and why? What kind of school has that kind of budget? I love this. The dancing on the fly system is so cool. Fun fact, when I went to my, my school that I did theater at for like two years, they had a fly system there. And the first thing I thought of was this scene in which Troy was dancing on the fly system. And I was like, wow, it's the thing that Troy danced on in Scream. It was kind of iconic. Also, he's dancing on the stage. Who was, who was doing the lights? Lights don't just go on by themselves. That was a really nice scene. I like that scene. I feel like it was important for Troy to talk to sort of like an outside party about his issues. See, that was a very mature thing for her to do. But then she just goes back on it because she goes to graduation and she goes to prom. Or she goes to like the show or she doesn't make prom for some reason. Prom. See, look at this encouraging friend. Well, I don't plan on missing my prom. But you did. See, Chad, great alternative to your sucky situation. You can still go to prom. You just bought a tux and tickets and then he doesn't go to prom. It makes me very angry. My prom is wherever you are. Okay, that clears up a little what he just said before with I'm not missing the prom because the prom was with Gabriella so he's not missing Gabriella, whatever, blah 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 blah. But like you, you bought a tux and you bought tickets and you are apparently saving your pennies to buy a new car and yet you're wasting all this money to drive all the way to Stanford to pick up Gabriella. What? We love the reprise. Even though it's not the reprise, it's just the second verse, but like this, bringing it back, so good. See, in this scene, they all go back to the dresses that they were wearing in the A Night to Remember dance, except for Troy for some reason. He doesn't go back to his gray tux. And that like looks so much better than this black one. See, even Gabriella changes outfits, which is what really fucks me up. I'm so confused as to why they did that. Like, why would they keep everyone else's outfit except for Troy's? 
It would make sense if Troy and Gabriella both had outfits from, like, this scene. But Gabriella changes her dress so that it's the same as the A Night to Remember dress. I don't get it. These guys not ready to say goodbye to you. I think that line is sweet and all, but also, even if she does come back, she graduates in, like, a month. So East High's gonna have to get fucking ready. Also, in what world will the, uh, high school musical or play be that packed? No, I mean India. Dion. Troy Bolton just sent me a text. I'm pretty sure that's the one and only time they say his name in the entire movie. Also, let me just say a thing. It was said by Kelsey in the scene where she is playing the piano with Ryan that the opening night is two days away from prom. So, if Troy gets to Stanford the night of prom, they should have two days to make it back to Albuquerque. And if Albuquerque is like 1,053 miles away or whatever they said, they should have more than enough time in the two days to make it back before opening night. But they didn't. Why is that? Who knows? I have made the assumption that it's because his car broke down, but there is nothing. No one has said anything for us to make that inference. I think it's just supposed to be assumed because he's had car troubles the whole movie. I feel like that's the only reason they would put in that storyline in order to explain the fact that he's so late to opening night. But then they don't have a line about it or anything. He doesn't show up and he's like, sorry, my car broke down. Or like even like a throwaway line in order to explain why he's so late when he had two days to make it from Stanford to Albuquerque. It makes no sense. I don't understand why he missed the opening night because he shouldn't have at all. Another point, an issue I've always had with the scene, is that, like, Chad, the co-captain to the basketball team, is front and center, as he should be. But the other two important members that we know on the team, Zeke and Jason, are way in the back. And that I have an issue with. Because, like, why are they in the back when they should be more prominent characters in the storyline? Like, from a storytelling standpoint, they should be next to Chad like on either side of him but there's just these two random backup dancers and I'm like why because like they're not bad dancers I've gone back and I've like paid attention to them in the group numbers they're not bad dancers so they should be next to Chad in this number but even if they weren't like the best you can edit around that like for a storytelling standpoint they should be next to Chad because they are more important members of the basketball team than these other randos that we don't know so I have an issue with that. Brian had maybe like a three minute number to completely change his outfit because he's amazing. Why did no one call places for him? Like why is he just sitting in his dressing room not in costume? And then they just let him stay on stage and do all this. Like, close the curtain! The real question here is, why is Sharpay so upset about her being in her dress? as if she doesn't know that Tiara is her understudy and would have to go on in place of Sharpay. It's like the first time that she's heard about this, as if Sharpay wasn't there when Miss Jarvis said that Tiara would go on in her place. Like, I don't get why she was upset when she walked into the room. Also, I'm pretty sure I made a note about this, but like, this whole reveal that she's evil really comes out of left field when you don't have any of the deleted scenes that like, imply that she's evil. Like, the whole redoing Sharpay's locker to be British and like, Ryan's line about Tiara being a stage name. It's like, we need the foreshadowing so that it makes sense when you're like, oh, she's evil. Otherwise, you're just like, what the hell's going on? I also don't get why Sharpay has such an issue with this. Like, if we're thinking of it in an objective standpoint, Tiara was able to fool everyone into thinking she was a nice person, and Sharpay's gonna have to graduate, so having someone that, like, seemingly talented, quote unquote, manipulation's part of acting, to, like, take over the drama department should be a good thing, you know? But Sharpay has an issue with it for some reason. But let's, okay, wait, question. How does she know that that's Troy Bolton? You know, when like recruiters or like any like judgy person comes to see a show, you usually don't know who they are unless you look at the program. And if you're looking at the program, you would see that someone else already went on as Troy. So wouldn't you assume that that person was Troy Bolton? How do you know that this is the real Troy Bolton? You know? Another thing, I really like how they like cut to Troy's mom and dad in the audience because they were there without knowing that Troy was gonna be in it. So that means that they were there just to support, I'm guessing like the overall basketball team that's for some reason in that number. I don't know how they got them to do that, but at the very least, or what I am believing is Chad. They were there to support Chad and that I love. I'm so happy that Ryan's so happy with the choreography because it's really good. That moment with the, great. Okay, this moment 
it's very very sweet and all but you know can we recall to maybe like about 10 minutes ago when Sharpay's on the phone with her parents and she's like I love the roses now if you're just thinking about that and you're thinking there was no way that Troy on the way over here could have bought flowers in order to surprise Gabriella. Logically thinking, they stole those from Sharpay! Which is like so not cool. Also, like the tissue paper around it, blue, like Sharpay's outfit in the thing. Like they so stole those from Sharpay to give to Gabriella. That's not cool. Why would they do that? Like, like when you're not thinking critically about this, which I generally do not, but I'm doing it for the sake of this video. I don't want to sound like I'm being like really harsh on this movie because I do love it. I love it so much. And when I watch it, I usually just like don't think critically and I just enjoy the movie because the movie is great. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of what I'm going to do, I need to be thinking critically. I need to be like, why are these things happening? Like this, why do they steal roses from Sharpay? Like, no! Also, Gabriella's mom is in the audience. Isn't she supposed to be back in Stanford? How did she make it here before Gabriella? Like, many questions. A thing that my friend brought up when we were watching this movie is like, if Sharpay is supposed to enter from the star, how does the Sharpay Sharpay get lowered from the ceiling? How did they have two different entrances to the scene? Like, who lowered that ladder so that Sharpay could enter? But also, hats off to all these backup dancers. In like, the context of the story, any high schooler, like, in this situation would not know what to do. But they just continue dancing and they keep going, even though they're very confused. And I'm like, D props, props to all of them. I don't get how, why after all of these songs, they just sort of stay on stage for a while and like, wave at the audience, like, continue the show. Okay, this part of the movie confuses me. Because, what, again, when you're thinking critically about it, you just saw the um, Juilliard people talk to Miss Darbus. So you would assume that the show is over. But the people are still in the audience. So you would then continue to think, oh, this is still part of the musical. Because this is like their graduation, but then they have the bigger graduation outside later. So why did the Juilliard people leave in the middle of the show and already give their whole deliberation without seeing the full show? You know? And then Miss Darbus just adds in who wins the scholarships as if there wasn't a script to go on? I'm, I just don't get it. See, this part looks like part of the musical. It's so confusing where they draw the line. See, they just sort of leave in the middle of the show? I, I don't get what, I don't get what's going on. See, and this is their whole graduation. That's a really cute speech. I really do like it. I love like the dropping in of all like the song titles and everything, but also a thing that my friend also brought up. Why is Troy making a speech? <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that he's valedictorian? I do not believe you, especially since we saw on Gabriella's profile thing for Stanford, she's valedictorian. And if Gabrielle is there, shouldn't she be making the speech? Again, from a storytelling standpoint, it should be Troy. Troy's like the main character, but like he should have no standing to make a speech. Unless he was like class president or something. That would make sense. But like, I thought that was Taylor. I don't know. I'll look it up. But it, he shouldn't be making a speech, you know? Taylor is the class president and editor of the yearbook. She should be making a speech. It should be her and... Gabriella making the speech. What? Who? Who allowed Troy to make a speech? That's also yeah. It's cute that uh, Sharpay's dog gets to graduate, but like, no. Also, that coordination to have like the robes be an E and an H for East High. My school could never. <laughs> and then for them to all move in order to make a wildcat. Also, my school could never. That coordination is crazy. This song is so good. I love this song so much. And the choreography is so nice. I love this song. We love a good jazz square. I really like how Chad and Taylor had a moment in the song. Cause their relationship's really cute. Every time I see that ending with the curtain, I cry. It's so good. It's so well done. It's lovely. I love it a lot. We love Kenny Ortega. Okay, this video devolved more into like a reaction and a thoughts video than a likes and dislikes, but like from my reaction, my thoughts, I think you can take a grasp of what I like and what I don't like. So it's whatever. I want to like show my likes and dislikes to show that there are like things that I like that I will have to take out and there's things that I dislike that I will have to keep in to make it an overall better movie. <laughs> Uh, 
of the what are they called? Past athletes, team members. <laughs>